Thank you for joining us, Kimberly. We have Kimberly Hopscheid here today with the Game Changer book, and we're going to ask her a few questions and get to know her a little better. Hi, Natalie. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So, Kimberly, um, tell us what you do and a little bit about yourself first. Great. Um, so I am, my name is Kimberly Hobshite and I am a serial entrepreneur and I joke that that does not mean that I sell cereal. <laughs> I've done it again and again in a couple of different ways and I've worked in the corporate world but I've had five different profitable businesses and really enjoy creating businesses and, um, and the entrepreneur lifestyle that that get, affords people, especially parents, especially people with kids. Um, my company is I'm Hearing Stories, and it's an audiobook production company helping authors bring their, give their uh, books a voice. That's awesome. So why did you think it was important for you to um, have a chapter, write a chapter in The Game Changer? Yeah, well, um, a lot of the um, a lot of parents out there have uh, I I have uh, two children, my son Drew and my daughter Bridget, and we uh, really have a good time hanging out together. And they both have their own amazing lives and creations that they're making. And when uh, last summer was happening, uh, I actually ran into a, an issue with. My son being at kind of an awkward age, he was 15 and a half going into the summer, and we were wondering what we were going to do, which was sort of the impetus for the story behind the book. But your question was actually, why did I think that it was important to write a story and a chapter in The Game Changer? And that's because um, I've read the other volumes of The Game Changer, and I've met some of the other entrepreneurs that are in this Game Changer. And the stories that inspire people to take action and know that, you know, even through some really challenging things, some really amazing things can be born. And uh, I, I'm, a, I, I'm a big believer in gaining inspiration from challenge. And I think that that's probably what motivated me the most to put a chapter in myself. Absolutely. The other books were fantastic. So I know this book is going to be just as good. If not better, it's, it's <laughs> amazing to work with all of you. So tell us something that either um, expand on something that was in your chapter that we don't know, or tell us something completely different. Um, give us a little insight. Yeah, good question. Um, so my father was an entrepreneur, and he worked in corporate, and then was an entrepreneur as well. Uh, so I think he sparked that lifestyle in me where you can, you certainly are, I, I'm sure there's plenty of entrepreneurs out there who hear about the lifestyle of an entrepreneur and think that it's, you know, you work 10 hours a week and then you blow off the rest of the week. <laughs> and in reality, it's hard, you know, there's a lot of pieces to it. There's a lot of work and a lot of effort that goes behind it. But when you're an entrepreneur, you're working for yourself, for your own cause, for your own things, um, and what you truly love doing, what you want to spend your time on. And when I was in corporate, I don't know about those of uh, your audience who are in corporate now, uh, you may feel this way as well. When I was in corporate, I was really loving what I did for a period of time, and then something would shift and change, and you know, the corporate values didn't really align with my values anymore. And I was, um, you know, I was a senior manager and um, carrying forward values that didn't necessarily match what my values were. And as an entrepreneur, um, you never have to make that choice. You get to say, you know, this is who I am and this is what I believe in and this is what I want to do and this is what's fun for me. And I think that's, um, that's probably what I really I took away from that is having a dad who really saw that you, you can make your own path, you can make your own way, and you can have it be profitable, not just, uh, not just fun on the side like a little, you know, <laughs> little something on the side. It's a real business. It's really profitable, and it grows, and it, it stands on its own. Yeah, that's awesome. Yes, it's definitely a different world than corporate <laughs> in right. so many ways. So, so what would you say your main message of your chapter is? So um, I think it's probably uh, not to, here's a spoiler alert, but my <laughs> the last line is, um, you are never too young or too old to be an entrepreneur. And I believe that so firmly, that wherever you are in your life, um, even if you're in corporate and you want to stay in corporate, um, having an entrepreneurial business that speaks to who you are and what you do and what you can contribute in this world is such a gift. And mm -hmm. it's not just a gift to you. I, I know that you know it's a fortune for some people. They create their own fortune out of it. 
Um, and it is fortune for, for me to be able to do that. But it's also fortune for the people you're creating for. You're creating something that's amazing for the people that are out there that are consuming your product or buying your coaching program or getting your coaching or your, um, if you write a book, uh, getting your book and, and learning from that. And they get value out of what you created. And if you just stay in your world of doing whatever it is somebody else is paying you to do, and you don't get that out there ever, that's a loss to this, this universe. And it I really think, is. Um, and I think that's somebody else's dream instead of your own, right? Exactly. Well, yes, very well said, Natalie. Mm -hmm. And I think that if you, if you have something inside, um, no matter how young you are or how old you are, it, you're never too young and you're never too old to start a business. And so that's the punchline for me. I was fortunate enough in the story to be able to create a business with my son based around what he loves to do yeah. and, and turn it into a profitable business over the summertime. And I, I think that I hope that that is an inspiration to those of your listeners out there that are, are thinking about maybe they want to, but they don't know if they can make a go of it. So. Absolutely. Thank you. That's awesome. Um, so this next question is very similar, so it may tie together, but for the people that are reading your chapter, what is the one takeaway that you would like them to walk away with? Um, do it, you know, just do it. If you want to be an entrepreneur, um, there's a lot of pieces and there's a lot of parts and there's a lot of things to do besides I just love it. Um, don't get me wrong. There's once you decide that you want to do it, there are many, many steps. Um, you know, if you have the perfect thing that you want to sell, that's great. But then you've also got to sell it. And that's, you know, 30 to 50% of the job is doing the sales. And if you love to sell, that's great. But you actually have to have something to do to sell, right? Uh, some sort of product. So there's always something that you need to do to create and, and, and learn and expand who you are as a person. Um, but if you, if you have something that needs to get out there to the world, I encourage you just do it. Find a find a mentor, find a coach, find somebody who's done some of that before, um, and learn what it is you need to do in order to make that free, freed from its confines. I guess not necessarily free of cost, um, but freed from you and out there into the world. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I I would say that people that go for their dreams completely build the life that they want, it doesn't always work and failure is okay because usually you learn and you move on, right? Yep. I'm a graduate of Cal Poly San Luis Obispo, go Mustangs, <laughs> and their motto is uh, learn by doing. And I, I cannot tell you how important that is to my life. In fact, my lovely daughter, Bridget, is uh, graduating this year from Cal Poly San Luis Obispo. Yay. And learn by doing is, is a motto that goes through our whole family. And it sometimes feels like learn by failing. Go <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <Fail> forward. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you very much, Kimberly. So if someone wanted to get to know you a little better, follow you, or... Uh, work with you, what's the best way that they can get hold of you? Yep, you can go to uh, my website, which is I'm Hearing Stories, uh, www.imhearingstories.com, and or you can send me an email to Kimberly at I'm Hearing Stories.com, and I'm out on Facebook and Twitter as well. So if you'd like to do that, you can probably click on the link below and, and uh, take a look at that. Um, but you're, I'm a huge fan of LinkedIn and networking, so I'll see you out there. All right, great. Thank you very much. And congratulations once again on being one of the authors uh, of the Game Changer book. You, are, uh, you are, have been a fabulous guide and mentor to me through this process. It's been a real joy working with you and your team, um, and I, I, it has been nothing but a joy. Thank you. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs>